when I bought this laptop, I saw in the box, Asus in search of incredible. And I told myself, that's a bold statement. I mean, it's a laptop, right? What could this laptop possibly have that could make it incredible? Today marks 60 days since I first purchased this laptop, and I now understand what makes this laptop so special. In today's video, we'll go over why I think this computer is incredible. For starters, the opinions in this video are 100% mine. I was not paid for, nor am I affiliated with any company while reviewing this product. The last time I purchased a computer was back in 2012, and in fact, here it is. I bought the MacBook back then, and not just any MacBook, but it was the MacBook Pro back in 2012. And truth be told, whenever I narrowed down my options down to two, it was down between the new MacBook Pro with the new M2 chip, or the Asus laptop with the dual monitors. Now this video isn't about why I chose the ASUS over the MacBook, but if you are interested in the process of how I ended up choosing this laptop, then just leave a comment down below and I'll gladly make a video. Quite frankly, I was pretty blown away by this machine. And I feel like this machine can really serve the needs of many people out there. Now it is a little bit of overkill, but in my opinion, it is definitely worth the money. So let's go ahead and get into it. So to review this product, I came up with the benchmark that covers nine different categories. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about this display. We'll be talking about the CPU performance, We'll be talking about battery life. We'll be talking about the build quality, graphics and gaming performance, audio quality, keyboard and touchpad, the customization and pricing. And if you wanna skip ahead to any part of the video, then go ahead and just click to the timeline and click on the part that interests you the most. So let's talk about the display. This by far is the best part of the laptop. It's the world's first 16 by 10, 14 and a half inch, 120 Hertz HDR OLED panel. And it has a second screen as a 12.7 inch IPS panel. It is truly a first of its kind. It has a peak brightness of 550 nits. It is somewhat difficult to see in direct sunlight, but it is still very usable whenever you're outside. It has true blacks, which means it has an infinite contrast ratio, and it also covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, which means that this can be used even for professional video editing. And believe me, your games look amazing on this screen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the second monitor isn't an OLED screen, but an IPS monitor which means it's basically an LCD screen and it's obvious that it's nowhere near as nice as the main monitor, but the point of this monitor is to improve the efficiency and multitasking capabilities of the user. I'll cover more about its multitasking capabilities in the customization section of this video. And if you do wanna preserve some battery, then you can just turn off the second monitor. The monitor is a 2880 by 864, 32 by 10 aspect ratio, also with a 120 Hertz refresh rate. Both monitor panels are touchscreen enabled and supported by the ASUS PIN 2.0 that comes with the machine. Having both monitors is incredibly useful. And like I said earlier, I'll go over some of the multitasking capabilities and why it's so awesome inside of the customization feature. So now let's talk about the CPU performance. The ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 Duo has the latest Intel Core i9-1300H processor. This powerhouse CPU boasts high clock speeds up to 5.4 gigahertz and has 14 cores making it an excellent choice for both productivity and creativity workloads. This for me was one of the top selling points. This laptop, which I purchased with the maxed out specs, outperformed the newest MacBook with the maxed out specs in almost every category when it came to CPU performance. Yes, you heard that right. It outperformed the highest specs MacBook in almost every category. Now, I'm a big fan of the MacBook Pro lineup. In fact, the way that Apple integrates the CPU and the GPU with the new M2 chip is really a revolutionary product and it's gonna give a whole new meaning to efficiency. But still, the fact remains, this computer outperformed it. Now, it didn't outperform it in every category and one of those categories is the battery life. Now for me, I typically like to use a screen at about 70% brightness. And I find that whenever I'm developing, which usually means I'm spinning up a server and using both monitors, I can get about the entire day worth. But this obviously depends on your usage for battery life. I haven't had any issues when I go out to public like a coffee shop, but generally speaking, if I'm doing something that requires intensive graphic processing, I do need to be near an outlet. Now this generation did get a bump in its battery and it does now have a 76 watt per hour battery which does provide about seven and a half hours of web browsing or six and a half hours of video playback but generally speaking if i'm doing work that doesn't deal with intense graphic processing then i can really squeeze out a lot of hours in this laptop but if i do want to get the maximum performance then i keep my computer plugged in now i want to talk about the build quality because this computer is a major flex it has turned the heads of everyone that i come into contact with 
including Mac users. I have to believe that a lot of it comes from the build quality. On the outside, we have a matte tech anti-fingerprint coating, and it displays the monogram of the ASUS logo. And I have to say, I love, love, love this design feature. It's one of those, if you know, you know type of features. It does come in only one color, which is the matte tech black. And even though it does come with the anti-fingerprint coating, I do find that I find fingerprints on the outside. And if you look closely, then you do find some. So it does do a pretty good job of preventing fingerprints, but it's not fingerprint proof. But I do keep a microfiber cloth close by because I do like to wipe down the screens and I do like to wipe down the outside. But in general, it does a pretty good job of keeping away fingerprints. If we look on the right hand side, we see that there's a single type A 3.2 Gen 2 USB port and two Thunderbolt for USB-C ports. On the back you have three fans, an HDMI 2.1 port, and a micro SD 7.1 express reader. And then if we look at the left side, then we see that we have three fans and an audio input jack. Now I had to dock the build quality by half a point because for me personally, I really wanted to have a full SD card reader. And what we got was a micro SD card reader. Especially since this is a laptop that's built for creators, you would think that they would have prioritized a SD card slot. But if you really wanted to have a full SD card slot reader, then that is available on the 16 inch laptop. Now, even though this computer was made for creators, it's definitely powerful enough for a gamer. Now, if you're a gamer, you're gonna be used to this comment, but something to note is that the fan can get pretty loud when you're gaming or when you're editing 4K videos. The RTX 4060 brings real-time ray tracing when gaming, and it has an MUX switch to reduce latency with gaming. And like I mentioned earlier, because it has true blacks, it has an infinite contrast ratio, and it covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. And this just looks amazing whenever you're trying to edit photos or whenever you're trying to edit videos or whenever you're just trying to have some fun and play some games. There is something that I wanted to point out and that is that the audio actually sounds like it comes from underneath the second monitor. Now because of that, it does sound like the audio does get a little muffled. And there were a little bit of times whenever I was gaming that the audio did come out a little muffled. And so I did dock the audio quality just by half a point because of that. But the reality is that whenever you're gaming, you most likely are gonna be using a pair of high quality headphones. So to me, that really isn't a big deal. And this laptop can get pretty loud. Now, even though I said that the sound quality can sound a little muffled because it's coming out from underneath the second monitor, I actually never had any issues with understanding sounds that were coming out from the laptop. But I also haven't tried this out in louder environments. But all in all, the audio quality in this laptop is just incredible. It definitely is loud enough for you to enjoy any YouTube videos, any shows that you're playing on your laptop, but the audio quality that's coming out of this computer is definitely good enough for your streaming or for your gaming. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of this computer is the keyboard and the touchpad. Because of the placement of the second monitor, the keyboard is forced all the way down to the bottom and the touchpad is small and to the right. I had a 30 day return policy when I bought this laptop and I decided that if the keyboard was too much of a problem that I would return it within that time frame. But about 10 days after playing around with the laptop, I was able to adjust to the keyboard and I find that I now enjoy typing on the keyboard. And that's because of the ergonomics behind the keyboard. ASUS has improved the keyboard by making the keys slightly larger. It also has a nice kickback after you type. And that's because of the way they built the dish keycaps that are 0.2 by 0.2 millimeters and have a long key travel of 1.4 millimeters. The touchpad has an anti-fingerprint coating applied to it and ASUS claims that it remains looking new even after 10,000 swipes. And I would say that I definitely use the touchpad quite a bit and still even 60 days later, I don't see any fingerprints on the touchpad. In addition to the ergonomics, it also allows for multi-gesture. With three fingers, if you swipe up, then you can see all the windows that you have open. If you swipe down with three fingers, then you go straight to your desktop. And if you swipe left or right with the three fingers, then you can cycle through your open applications. So one of the most unique things about this computer is the way that it's customizable. From a hardware perspective, you can add more RAM to this machine because the RAM is actually soldered on. So as far as RAM goes, make sure that you get the specs that you want because you won't be able to add more in the future. But you can upgrade the hard drive as it does support one M2 slot that does support Gen 4 drives. And you can also remove and replace the battery if you need to. Because the RAM is soldered on and you're unable to upgrade it in the future, I did actually dock a point from the customization, but one of the best selling points about this computer is how customizable it is from a software perspective. This does come with the new Windows 11 installed and I have to really give credit to the ScreenPad Plus software. This control panel comes with built-in shortcuts for the Adobe lineup and you can now create custom functions with the recent update to the software. So for me, I have found that creating shortcuts for Visual Studio has been incredibly helpful. Some shortcuts that I have created in my control panel include save and open terminal, which yes, there are keyboard shortcuts that handle that, but there are times whenever I'm reviewing my code where my hands aren't on the keyboard and having the option in the control panel is a nice touch. But the second monitor really allows for you to build the ultimate efficient workspace 
and allows for you to really elevate the way you multitask on a laptop. Another instance of how I'm able to customize my browser is that the control panel that's down on the second monitor is really helpful. So if I am on a browser and needing to debug, then I can have shortcuts to the actual inspector or I can have shortcuts to record my screen. If I'm in Adobe, then I have a whole lineup of presets that are really helpful for letting me accomplish my tasks. Now finally, pricing. This is not a cheap laptop, but this laptop with the max performance comes out to $23.99, which sounds like a lot. But when you compare it to the MacBook Pro 2023 edition with the M2 chip, this is a bargain, especially since the equivalent price of a 14 inch MacBook Pro with similar RAM and hard drive space is going to run about $3,500. And like I mentioned earlier, this computer outperforms the MacBook Pro in almost every category. And because of what all comes with this computer, I think it's perfectly priced. Now, if you found this video helpful, then please do me a favor and click the like button and subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified of our latest videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.